and welcome to another episode of the Kids Ministry Collective Podcast. My name is Tom Bump, and I'm your host. Thanks for joining me, my friends. I am looking forward to this episode to share with you. I want to talk about five things that we need to get right as we kick off a new ministry year. Five things for every children's ministry leader to get right as we kick off the new year. So as we dive into this, I want you to know that this episode is sponsored by kmccoach.net. If you are looking for someone to walk beside you, to help get you unstuck, to give you a place to get some feedback, get some encouragement, develop your leadership skills, learn how to lead your teams in a more effective way. Let me tell you, everyone does better with a coach and a coach changed my world, helped me use my time better, get things done, create margin, create some balance in my ministry and in my personal life. It was amazing and it was totally worth the investment. Don't think you can't afford a coach because you can, and you honestly can't afford not to. I truly believe that with all my heart. So check out kmccoach.net. Uh, set up a clarity call so you can learn more about what KMC Coach has to offer you. We can work within any budget. We want this to be something that anyone can do. If you're willing to grow and willing to invest in yourself, we're willing to invest in you because we believe everyone truly does better with a coach. So let's dive into this episode as we talk about five things that we need to do as ministry leaders to kick off the new ministry year right. Well, let me tell you, to start off uh, in my experience and the things that I've learned over the 30-some years of doing children's ministry and youth ministry, next-gen ministry, is we have to have a we is better than me attitude. We is better than me. When you're doing ministry, if you're doing it alone, it is not healthy. It's not the design that God designed for the church. He designed us to be in community. He designed us to work together, to help each other. There's a great old proverb that says, you know, if you want to go somewhere fast, go alone. But if you want to go farther, take someone with you. I truly believe that when you have the we over me mentality as a leader and you do ministry, you find ways to engage others, invite others to use their talents and their gifts and their abilities. Listen, go read about the body of Christ in scripture. We've got a hand that has lots of digits and we each one of those finger digits is important. We can't do something on just a pinky. We can't do something with just a thumb. We need the whole hand so that we can pick each other up and move ministry forward. So I want you to start off this year asking yourself, do I have, as the leader, do I have a we over me mentality? Or is it me before we? There's leaders that don't want to admit that they have the me over we mentality. They want to do things alone. They feel like it takes too long to educate or equip somebody. Or they've convinced themselves that nobody wants to help. Nobody wants to serve. Listen, if you say that long enough and loud enough and often enough, yeah, you're going to become that. You're going to push that out of you and people are going to pick it up that they don't need you. Listen, my friends, early on in my ministry, I made a huge, huge, huge mistake because I let off a me over we mentality. And I had people that, no, I don't want to volunteer because ah, Tom's got it all under control. He doesn't need our help. He does it all anyway. Listen, you have to pay attention to those little things. And you have to ask people, what's it like to be on the other side of me? Get yourself vulnerable and humble enough that you can ask that question and be thinking about, are you letting that off? Because that can totally disrupt and destroy your recruiting, your team building, and your ministry, and your credibility as a leader. Don't make that mistake that I made. I learned a painful lesson, and I had to be confronted in a harsh way to get my attention to realize I was doing this. And it wasn't intentional completely, but 
I had a lot of pride issues and I was thinking I could do this on my own. And I had convinced myself that nobody else wanted to do it, that everybody else was too busy. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. So that was bonus for you. Let's dive into, here's one of the first steps to take. And that is set clear goals and vision for the next 60 to 90 days. Really, you want to focus on what are you going to accomplish in those next 60 and 90 days? And you need to put some deadlines, some reminders in your calendar to say, hey, this is what's going to come in the next 60 and 90 days. And I'm going to plan it out into small bite-sized pieces. And I'm going to set calendar reminders to say, okay, at this date, I've got to have this, this, and this done. I want you to pick three things that you're going to focus on in the next 60 to 90 days. One, I want it to be on you as the leader. What are you as the leader? How are you as a leader going to grow? What are you going to develop inside of you? What are you going to learn or how, what are you going to delegate or whatever? Pick one thing that you're going to focus on for yourself over the next 60 to 90 days. And then I want you to set some reminders, pick a couple of dates that you are going to remind yourself that before that 90 day deadline, you're going to get this accomplished. You're going to see it and maybe even clarify how you'll know that you've accomplished that. So set a clear goal for yourself. Then for your team, how are you going to invest in those around you? Again, if we have the, the we over me mentality, you're going to have at least one other person that works close with you. The bigger you are in your ministry, the more people you have, the more people you need around you as your inner circle, as your leaders, as your coaches, whatever you want to call them that are helping you manage the, the volunteer team because you cannot do it alone. No one can manage more than five to 10 people at the most. So you need to have some people that can do that. Uh, you can oversee, but you can't manage more than that. Just trust me on that. So what are you going to do to develop your leaders? Are you going to do a book study? Are you going to set some recruiting goals? Are you going to set some training goals? What do you want to do for your team? And, and so what are you going to, how are you going to set that up? And again, put it on the calendar, set some reminders for yourself. And then for your ministry, what do you want to see happen in, your, in the next 90 days? Do you have an outreach coming up, a fall festival or a Halloween thing or trunk or treat? Those are coming up in the next 60 to 90 days. So what do you need to get done during that? Have you put it on the calendar and broken it down into bite-sized pieces so you can do a little at a time so that when you get to that, that date, it is done? And you also want to be thinking about how am I going to communicate all of these things? How am I going to communicate, communicate to my team in the next 60 to 90 days? How am I going to communicate the vision for this outreach and who we need and what we need in place? So I want you to be thinking about, because it is vital for you to start this ministry year off right, knowing where you're going. And does your team know where you're leading them? If you're gatekeeping information, it will weaken your credibility, it will weaken your leadership, and it will weaken your overall team of where you want to go. You won't get where you want to go if you don't share it. So how do we implement these 60 to 90 day goals? Well, you need to vision cast. You need to share it. You need to let people know. So you need to get those that are closest to you, your leadership team, your three, your one, whatever you have as your leadership, you need to communicate it to them. You also need to communicate it above you. So your senior leaders need to know this is what I'm focused on and this is how I'm going to get it done and this is when it's going to be done. Because if you want to gain credibility, you need to share these things with your leader. If you want to lose credibility, don't follow through on it or don't communicate clearly or change it all together partway through. You need to clearly share your vision of where you're going. You also need to make sure that your communication is transparent and free-flowing. You need to make sure that everybody knows what you know. Don't gatekeep. It is a losing way to lead. I can guarantee it. You will lose credibility. You will lose leadership credit. You will lose your team. And you'll lose respect if you don't do that. All right, step two. We need to work on building strong teams. So we need to be thinking about how we can build a cohesive and motivated team. 
So we need a solid recruitment strategy. Do you have a very clear onboarding ramp for people that want to do this? Is it consistently done? Don't just recruit at the beginning of the year and then forget it. You need to be consistently recruiting through the year. If you don't know how to do this, I have a very simple tool called the Volunteer Boot Camp. It's on the Kid Ministry Collective website. Uh, if you can't find it, just message me. I will, I will send you a link to it. It's, it's a very affordable course that breaks it down super simple and consistent. But you need a consistent, simple, sustainable strategy. Nobody has time to do tons of courses. And that's why I created the boot camp. Because I wanted it simple. I wanted it sustainable. I wanted something that you could master very, very quickly and implement very, very quickly. And this plan works. I know it. I've used it. I've done it. I've taught it to other leaders. They're doing it and it works. But you need a clear plan on how to build a strong team. You need to be consistently developing them, taking them to a conference, taking them to training, investing in them to help them be the best that they can be to serve others. Because together, that strong team is going to take you farther and further than you could ever do alone. You need to have some fun together. So what are you intentionally planning to kick off this fall with some fun? Because you're going to be asking a lot of people. So what are you going to do to help them have some fun and connect? I want to tell you a simple thing. Just invite them over for a fire pit Friday and have, have some s'mores and some roast some hot dogs and just have a good time. Play some cornhole or whatever you like to do. Go to Top Golf. Go to a, an escape room. But go have some fun. Don't just do training, training, training and throw stuff at them. Have some fun. People want to be a part of a group that has fun together. And you get to learn a lot about people when you're having fun. So think about how am I going to build that strong team this fall? What can I do to strengthen it? Whose gifts am I missing that would help my weaknesses? Where could I shore up myself and my leadership? You know, all of us have blind spots and all of us have weak areas, things that we just don't do well. We also have things that we that just drain us. We need to find people that that fills their bucket, that that energizes them and let them do it. I have learned to give away more. And the more I gave away, the better a leader I am. And I get to see God work through the gifts of the Holy Spirit in other people. And it is awesome when we do that. All right, step number three, we need to learn to prioritize our development and our training times. So we need to get more intentional about throughout the year because vision leaks. So we need to find simple ways, whether it's a text message, whether it's a short little video, an email, a handout, we need to consistently and probably in all of those ways, we need to make sure that we are building and developing our team, helping them become better leaders. So if you've got a group of small group leaders, what are you going to plan to do in this next 60 to 90 days to help them be better at it? How are you going to help them connect with their kids in their small group? How are you going to help them manage the group? Maybe they've got some wild little hooligans in their small group and, and they're having a hard time. What could you give them? What can you equip them with? What tools can you help them with so that they're prepared to do it? Help them learn the different learning styles. This generation alpha is different. And if we're not teaching our leaders the differences, because they may not be aware of the new ways that kids are learning and the way kids, are, all they're seeing is the way they misbehave and, and, and are not listening and not participating. So what are you going to do to help them? Maybe you need to create a workshop or maybe you need to invite someone in. Something that a lot of people don't realize that I do, and, and it's something that I've loved to do, it's how I got my start in children's ministry, was training leaders. And I offer workshops for churches. I can come to your church in person, or I can do a virtual workshop on how to lead a child to Christ, how to counsel for salvation, how to manage your classroom when they're disruptive, different ways to help kids learn memory verses, different ways to storytell, different ways to give invitations. 
I do lots of different workshops. And so if you're interested, feel free to message me at Tom at TomBump.com. I'd love to talk to you about that. And it doesn't matter whether it's I'm training five people or 500 people, but you need to be thinking about how are you going to equip and train? You could simply record with your phone a three minute video that says, hey, this week, here's one tip that you could use or give them a list of, hey, if the service runs long, here's here's some games that you can play to review your lesson. Here's some things that you can do to use this time intentionally instead of just letting them run wild. So think about the ways that you can learn. Create a platform for them. Uh, create the, for them some steps that they can progress as leaders. If you're intentionally discipling them, they're going to stick with you because they know you're investing in them, helping them to be an amazing leader. Now, step four, you want to create and think about how are we going to create a positive and inclusive environment for our kids? What do we need to do in our spaces? Have you ever done a nose test in your space? Like walk around and sniff, like take a deep breath. What does your environment smell like? You might need to bring somebody in that hasn't been in your building before and do this. Now you're going, why would I want to do that? Because you know what? We become nose blind. And scents are powerful things. Scents communicate. If something smells terrible, do you want to be there? If something smells good, do you want to be there? I mean, how many times have you driven down the road and you're not even hungry, but all of a sudden you smell some steaks or some burgers whifting through the air? And you're like, oh, that smells good. I'm not even hungry, but that smells good. Well, what about our environments? You know, one of the things that I've learned from Disney, now forget their moral standards, but they think about those kind of things. Every one of their hotels has a scent. Their rides have scents. Don't believe me? Search for Disney candles. Go ahead. Google it. Disney candle scents and watch what populates. There are scents for hotels and rides because people, that creates environment. Lighting creates environment. You can make subtle, simple changes that create this positive thing. Do you have noise-canceling headphones available for those kids that, that when the worship starts, it's too loud? I saw this happen at a church camp this summer when I was speaking at camp that one of the counselors realized this little boy was having a real hard time during worship because it was loud. She went and got her own headphones, sat down next to this little boy, put them on, and I watched her go back and forth to make sure that she could get it to where he could handle the volume. It was a beautiful thing. Are you thinking about those kind of environments? Your lighting, are you creating space so that if kids need to move, they can actively move without causing a disruption? Not every kid can sit on the floor for 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes they need something to do with their hands. What are you doing strategically so that your team and your people know how to recognize those things? This will make a difference for a child in the beginning of a year to know whether they're going to be loved and accepted in your environment. So think about some things that you can do. Maybe you need to take some training. My good friends at Key Ministries have wonderful trainings. Um, uh, Laura Deacon has some wonderful stuff. I'll put a link to her website in, in the show notes. Does wonderful things with inclusiveness for, for kids with challenges. All right, step number five, engaging parents. We want to kick off the school year and this new year in a positive way, letting parents know that we're cheering them on. Starting school can be very stressful for people, especially new young parents that are seeing their child go off to preschool or kindergarten for the first time, or that parent that their child's moving up into the, the fourth and fifth grade and <laughs> excuse me, and 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 they're they're nervous about the pressures that their child is facing. What are you going to do to help them through the phases of life? Uh, how are you going to assist them? What are you going to do? Maybe you could you could take a few minutes 
and text five parents every day. Hey, I'm praying for you. If there's something specific, just reply back. But if not, just know I'm praying for you and your family today. Just that simple little thing can do that. In fact, you might want to pause the podcast right now and, and pull five families' numbers and let them know that you, you want to pray for them today. Have a strategy that engages them and connects them together. Think about what's one thing I could do to invite parents to come together to connect, to share. Now, you may say, well, but, but not very many people are going to take advantage of it. Hey, do for a few what you want to do for many. Trust me, you start doing it for a few, more are going to want to come. I started a small group for parents on raising their children as spiritual champions. And it started with three families. Next thing I know, we had up to 10 coming. Why? Because those three started inviting other families to come and join us. They created a wider community for them. So think about what could you do? National Center for Biblical Parenting, my good friend Scott Taransky, has some fantastic resources and even some small group curriculums to help parents. Every parent wants to be a better parent. Maybe have a parent seminar. Invite a speaker to come in and present on those things. There are some great things out there. So there's your five that you can do to kick off this new year. The bonus, we over me. Step one, set the clear goals and vision. How are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? How are we going to keep sharing it? Step two, build that strong team around you. Step three, prioritize the training and development of your teams and your volunteers. Step four, foster that positive, inclusive environment so that all kids feel welcome, known, safe, and loved. Step five, engage parents and even grandparents and get that wider community together. Commit to building them up. Let me tell you, we can make this year, this school year kickoff, amazing for families. If you need any help, if you get stuck, if you're not sure how to implement any of this, please reach out. You can email me at tom at tombump.com. You can go to kidsministrycollective.com and see all the different things we offer. If you, if you really want to grow as a leader, check out kidminplus.net, our new membership community for leaders. We're starting to gain some momentum over there. We're starting to share resources and have some great discussions. You can get coaching and encouragement there. So you might want to check that out. It's a simple $15 a month membership. Go check it out and enjoy it. It will help you as a leader. So that's going to wrap up this episode of the Kids Ministry Collective podcast. And you're not going to want to miss the next episode because we're kicking off a brand new series talking about a great new book that's launching. And Jim Weidman and Yancey Weidman will be on the episode and you're not going to want to miss that one. So stay tuned for another episode real soon.